Hello everyone and welcome back to Chronos Plays Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations. Today, we're pressing Larry once again because the dude just won't tell us the truth. Tell us, Larry. My name is Larice, get it right. Mistakes like that are what keep you from being popular with the ladies like I am. Dots? Just who exactly are you? <laughs> I'm Larry Stoneham, apprentice extraordinaire. That's what he calls himself in any case. Then you are an artist. Of course, I'm an artist, the real thing. Yet again, that's what he calls himself. He does have some artistic abilities. Names mean nothing. There's only one issue I care to discuss. What were you doing? That is a very big issue indeed. Larry, if, it come, if we come to find out you, you like set the bridge on fire. I'm gonna be very upset with you. Sketching. The burning bridge. The burning bridge and everything that comes with it. What came with it? You wanna hear this from my lips to you, Edgy? You'll regret this. The sketch of mine is... Ah, enough. Just take this ridiculous sketch of yours out already, witness. What are you talking about? I don't know what you mean. It doesn't need to appear to be the fastest solution. I'll leave it to you, Mr. Edgeworth. What should I do? I get a terrible feeling that this, this sketch is revealed. The entire world may be changed by this dis God, I hope it's just a sketch with like freaking Iris dumping gasoline on the bridge, because that will be hilarious. Larry, I wonder if you could show us that sketch. Please. Well, well, even I couldn't have imagined it turn out like this. Imagine what? The Larice Dunham's debut would take place here, today, like this! Oh, ouch! Show it now! Okay, but steal yourselves! Okay, when I said he had artistic talent, we saw the portraits that he drew on those cabins, right? They were pretty good. Unless he, like, sketched them, I guess? This is the world of Larissa Stoneham. Uh, um, well... So this, uh, this is Dusky Bridge, correct? Qu quite a large bridge, if, isn't it? Your response, Ms. Von Karmer? Yes, uh, well... It's a better drawing than I expected. Isn't it? Isn't it? I struggled to reproduce those flames. I really did. Yes, I, I'm sure you did. <laughs> uh, this is going to get ugly. Is that supposed to be a lady flying over the bridge? No one has the courage to bring it up, it seems. This mysterious flying object. Larry. What? The burning bridge is fine. Very beautiful, in fact. But... What is that unfortunate looking figure? Huh, <laughs> you swear to that! I thought you might! However much, much I might want to ignore it, I can't. It's Iris, of course! Iris! I wish you'd take a better care of herself. We have plans for our future, you know. You might have plans for her future. I don't think her future involves you, dog. What would have happened if she had injured herself flying like that? She's on fire, dog! What? Larry, please, answer this next question honestly. Okay! Are you really claiming to have seen this? Are you claiming to have seen the silhouette of the defendant? Flying over a bridge that was engulfed in flames. Yeah, that's what I saw. And I only ate like five mushrooms. That's why I drew it. I'm an artist, a real artist. Are you high? The girl, she's really high up in this picture. <laughs> hey, exactly. I'm glad everyone else thought he was high too, except for the judge. Ah, what was that for? This was all a bad dream. I was hitting you on the cheek to test the fat theory. Just whip your own cheek for now if you wish to test your wild theories. Anyway, no court of law will ever acknowledge that a people can f fly. Actually, there is some precedent for that. She was flying pretty high, my sweet Iris. She was about 30 feet in the air above the bridge. At least, it was really something to see. But this, this is, has to be some kind of mistake, eh? Mr. Edgeworth, please bring the witness back down to Earth. 
What? Me? The witness is your friend, is he not? Accessory to foolishness, Miles Edgeworth. Let's get back to the cross-examination by force if necessary. Miss Edgeworth, I expect you to expose the obvious contradiction here. Y yes, Your Honor. Looks like I've got another reason to remember this moron. Well, what do you think of my debut piece? Get that thing away from me. Okay, horrible sketch of what he saw that night. Now, how do you have been cross-examining him? Okay, so I press that and that. Hold it. So where did you see this sight from? Hey, no need to shout. When I was lying in the bed in, in that rundown shack, the crack of lightning bolt made me realize the bridge was burning. I just watched it for a while, for a while there, thinking how nice it was burning. And after about five minutes, I saw it. The defendant flying. That's right. That's when I decided to get to the bridge. I see. This all makes sense. Aside from the sketch itself. <laughs> yes, the sketch doesn't make any sense. I just need to convince the artist that his work is ludicrous. Hold it. You transferred everything directly onto the page. And that is the sketch here. Yep, sensational, is it? Or should that be scandalous? I put my mind at ease, anyways. Wait, but it did. That's right, the reason she didn't come to see come to me, even though I waited for her, was because she was trapped on the other side of that bridge. Dots? Could it be that Iris undertook that dangerous, desperate flight in order to reach me? It's, it's gotta be! Alright, go me! Ah! Continue, please. Iris, I know you're in the defendant chair, but any comments to to Larry here? Hold it. You forgot the passage of time to that extent, did you? Well, once I got caught up in something, I tend to forget everything else. That's true. He always been that way. I guess he doesn't mind about that, at least. Phoenix Wright appeared at the scene at 11:15. It was he. If he was drawing until then, that the spells all doubt. Aside from uh, the doubts of his humanity, there, eh? <laughs> There's a big clue waiting for me in this cross examination. This testimony does nothing less than mock the court. But I'm sure that there is a vital kernel of truth hidden there somewhere. Okay. Like, we have her hood. Larry, what did you really see that night? I don't particularly care. In your position, that's just being irresponsible. I... I drew exactly what I saw. I'll give you a whole dollar for that... that is the truth. If that is true the case, then there's one thing that we can say for certain. Uh, what might that be? The person who flew over that bridge... ...could not have been the defendant Iris. What? What do you mean? I don't understand. <laughs> a foolhardy, a foolhardy folly of a foolish statement by an equally foolish, fool, foolishly foolhardy fool. However, how exactly can you make this claim? Tell us, Larry. According to this picture, the individual who you say you saw was wearing a hood, correct? Of course she was. That rundown shack is quite a way up from the bridge. Uh, quite away from the bridge. The hood is what told me that this floating angel was my iris. The hood is my darling iris, and iris is my darling hood. Ah, it seems there is a bigger f there are bigger fools in this world than the ones on the defense bench. Larry, there's something you need to be made aware of. On the night of the murder, Iris wasn't wearing her hood. She had given it to Wright as a gift. Are you going to change your story now? Perhaps suggest it was Wright who took flight. What are you talking about? I think you understand what I mean just fine. Why? Why did Nick have Iris's hood? What? Edgy, what's going on between Iris and Nick? Why, you Nick, you dog? 
I, I do believe that this unbelievably mysterious sketch is destined to disappear, discredited and discarded. Straight into the garbage, eh? <laughs> what is it now, witness? It feels like I've been waiting 24 years for this day to come. Edgy, today's the day I get to completely stupefy you. Just pulls out a wand. Stupefy! What? What does it mean to get up, witness? I hate to have to do this, but I have some definitive evidence. Definitive evidence? Oh, yes, exactly that. Iris did indeed come flying over the burning bridge. And I, Luris Dunum, Dunum, shall prove it. I didn't expect to ask this again, but we shall need be needing your testimony once again. No, we don't. Tell us anything you know concerning the defendant as depicted in this sketch. You know, burning to death, flying over a burning bridge. And show you evidence that this nightmare was actually a reality. Okay, I hope you're ready, Edgy. Because I'm going to feed you a whooping, uh, whooping size of pain. A serving of pain. You've been serving us whooping, uh, whooping size of, uh, whopping. Not whooping, whopping size of pain this whole time. Trust me. Proof that Iris flew. When I reached Dusty Bridge, she was already gone. I was still worried, so I frantically searched all over her. That led me to find the beautiful crystal spear, half buried in the snow. I'm sure that Iris was to be wearing a, a spear hood. Oh my god. You have Elise's spear? spear? That has her blood on it? And you didn't give it to the cops? After all, no one else would have lost a crystal sphere that night. A, a crystal sphere? This one! Pretty, isn't it? But finders keepers! That sphere, where did you find it? Let me see. Around here somewhere. Looks about right. And it was half buried in the snow. It had pretty much stopped snowing by then. And there's still some falling uh, as I walk to the bridge. Huh. The court accepts this crystal sphere. That's mine, okay? I went back afterwards. Huh. There's something on it. Dots? Oh, oh my. It's... It's blood. What? Blood? Yeah, it's Elise's blood! Are you ready, Eddie? By tomorrow morning, you'll be calling me Master Larry. I thought your name was Larice. Yeah, I like the sound of that. No one's gonna push me around anymore. Didn't you want to be called Larice Dude <laughs> only a few minutes ago? Proof that Iris flew. When I reach... Okay. Press. Larry, you're a headache. So, you went to the burning bridge. Is that like burning men? That's right, to meet Iris. She actually flew to get to me. At least I could do is meet her halfway. But the defendant was not at the bridge when you got there, eh? I guess she went back to Hazakuro Temple? She's a girl after all. She must want to look her best. It must be lovely to live in a fantasy land of Larry's mind. Actually, it is so depressing I can't even work up the energy to point. So, what did you do next? Hold it. So you searched all over her. She was flying pretty high, you know. I thought maybe she slipped on her slipped on her landing and got hurt. Hey, it's more than possible. Also, when I headed out to the shack the first time, I was snacking on banana. And I was pretty sure I threw that peel away somewhere around there. So you know. Can anyone, can one guy really be this stupid? Well, yes. So did you find any signs of her so-called landing? Uh, I don't really remember. I kept on falling over myself and kind of lost for a while there. You, you fell over yourself? Yeah, the snow was deep and there was even a banana peel out there. Yep, there's stupid and then there's Larry Butts. The short of it is that you didn't find uh, any signs of her landing, correct? Then what happened next? Hold it. Half buried. 
It was sitting on the snow with a little gathered on top of it. It was really hard to spot, actually. I mean, it was dark out, too. I'm pretty impressed. You did well to find it. No matter what you may think when you look at me, I'm a pro. A genius security guard. I used a pen light I borrowed from my company to help my search. And by borrowed, I mean I stole it. It sparkled really brightly, as if it was saying, here I am to me. Oh, it does have a thing. Oh. It doesn't even look very much like the crystal sphere on Iris's hood. But I need to remind you that she was not wearing her that night. Hold it. Each nun is assigned their own hood. And, there is assigned to, and they are assigned only one. I know anything about that, okay? And Iris is special, alright, dude? Even if she did steal a spear hood, I forgive her! This is getting us nowhere. Our destination for the day, it seems. However, this crystal sphere was found at the bridge. That is a fact. If it didn't come from a hood, where else could it have come from? That is the question I aim to answer. Okay, so I'm assuming we're gonna have to present Elise or the photo of Elise here. Let's press first. Let me turn the last, this last, one last time, Larry. The reason you thought that this was Iris are the hood and this crystal sphere, correct? That's right. My gut is never wrong. I met that old bikini. Uh, I met that old bikini the next morning, and her crystal sphere was still there, safe and sound. Indeed. She was wearing it in this very room earlier today. This case isn't going to end without a fight. Supposing the obvious contradiction in this testament will be easy. But I fear that all of that awaits us is further mystery. That's true. Uh, check. So she does wear a hood. It's just a different hood. But she would already be dead at this point? Also flying, I guess. Oh, oh is it her ghost? But she drops a crystal sphere. Larry, that night, there was someone. Someone who lost the crystal sphere. There was? Who? Who was this stupid idiot? Miss Elise Donum. The mentor is a, the mentor to a stupid idiot. The victim? I have a photo of her here. And on the end of her staff, you can see a familiar looking crystal sphere. Uh, hey! That's my photograph! Give it back! Ouch! The crystal sphere like that is quite easy to find. I have one just like that on my branch. I'm a brooch. Brooch? 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 You have a brooch? 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 Coach? Brooch? Moach? Coach? Whatever! They look nothing alike! In any case, please take a look at this. This is the victim's staff, found at the scene of the crime. Ah! The crystal sphere! It's gone! What? 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 In the butt? I mean, what? Just what does this mean? If anyone jumped or flew across the bridge that night, it certainly was not Iris. After all, she was not wearing a hood, and more importantly, she wasn't on fire. The crystal sphere found at the landing site was not hers either. That means, the one who flew, and dropped the sphere, was the victim, Ms. Elise Dunham. Dunham. A fool alongside another fool, on a fool's errand to reach a foolish conclusion. First of all, this sketch, which I prefer to call a scribble, is ridiculous. People cannot fly, thus it is rejected. You can't do that, I saw it with my own two- ah! And this crystal sphere, this is nothing more than a red herring. You honestly believe that? Give it some more thought, and I'm sure you'll realize it, realize it as well, Miles Edgeworth. At least Donum was in her room the night of the murder. There was no reason for her to go to Dusty Bridge. Therefore, the sphere cannot be related to this case. Objection! Objection? Miss Franziska von Karma. The only people who will accept this added explanation are scatterbrains, scatterbrains and clowns. Why are you pointing at me? The victim's crystal sphere was found near the bridge on the night of her murder. Yet you expect us to believe that has nothing to do with this case. The crystal sphere. It was probably thrown away at the bridge after the murder. 
After the murder? There's blood on this crystal sphere, isn't there? Then this naturally suggests that it was thrown away after the murder took place. The killer placed it there to throw its in their investigation off the set. Which is the exact same reason he that he drew that ridiculous sketch. What? You mean... I'm the killer?! Ah! All joking aside... Just when did this crystal sphere appear near the foot of the bridge? Unless this can be proven in some way, I refuse to believe this is related to the case. She makes a valid point. There's no evidence that this, that at least Dunum, Donum, left Hasekura Temple that night. However, if somehow this crystal sphere can be, can be proven that to have been dropped before the victim was killed, then this case is going to be transformed into something else entirely. Well, we know she left to look for Pearl. And then maybe Pearl accidentally killed her? I don't really know yet. Your response, Miss Edgeworth. I want you to know your final opinion on the dis disposition of the crystal. If it's not related to the case, then this witness who you called will have been nothing more than a monumental waste of time, eh? Prepare yourself for some very appropriate punishment, Miles Edgeworth. Can I prove it? Can I prove that the crystal sphere was dropped before the murder took place? Can I? I mean... Maybe? I mean, I guess I have to, right? Probably? Can I prove it? This is- that isn't the issue. To simply prove it, that's the only option. That's what he'd do. That's the way Phoenix Wright would do this. Your Honor, allow me to prove something to you. I will prove that this crystal sphere is a vital link to the solving this case. You will do that? You will do what? The look in your eyes. You remind me of a Phoenix Wright when he is cornered. That should come as no surprise. Because right now, I'm Phoenix Wright, and I am indeed cornered. <laughs> I order you to present your evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. Evidence that proves that the Crystal Sphere was indeed dropped before the murder. Uh, has blood on it, half covered in snow. Oh, was it just a crystal sphere? Because it was half covered in snow? Take that! This crystal sphere, it was half buried in snow, correct? That's right! If it hadn't stopped snowing, then it would have been game over, man! The snow would have totally covered it! That's all I needed to hear from you, Larry. Your testimony makes one thing quite clear. You're an idiot. But also... What? When the crystal sphere was dropped, it was snowing, even if it was ever so slightly. Snowing? On the other hand, let us look at the scene of the murder. As proven earlier today, there is no snow on the victim's body. Ha! Huh. Therefore, the crystal sphere must have been dropped before the murder. Wha- What? I mean, it's true. Order! On the night of the murder, the victim did indeed go to Dusky Bridge. And there, something occurred that caused the staff crystal, uh, crystal sphere to come loose. What? What could have happened? This sphere, there's some blood on it, isn't there? Allow me to raise a certain possibility to, at this junction. The real crime scene was near the foot of Dusky Bridge. The murder did take place at Hasakura Temple. Only a fool would suggest such a foolish piece of absolute foolishness. Just who is this fool? In which part is this so? F in which part is so foolish, Miss Von Kama? Have you been paying any attention this whole time, Miles Edgeworth? The sister saw everything. She saw the victim being killed by the defendant in the courtyard. That's not exactly true, now is it? To put it more precisely, what she saw was. The murder weapon being removed from the victim's body. That's the same thing! No, it isn't! 
You said it yourself. Very little blood is lo actually lost. At the moment of a blade's insertion, do you want to talk about when the blade most blood uh, when the most blood would be lost from a body? That would be when the blade is removed. How do you like my impression of you, Von Kammer? If that statement is the truth, then Dusky Bridge could have easily be easily be the scene of the murder. The murder weapon was not removed, thus there was no bleeding. You are forgetting one vital thing, Miles Edgeworth. At least Donut's body was found in Hazakura Temple. On foot, it takes 15 minutes to travel from Dusky Bridge to Hazakura Temple. You mean to say someone carried the body there all the way there? Oh no, the snowmobile. I made it this far. The only place to take this is to the then. I just need to the, need to prove that my version of the events is at, is also perfectly plausible. Now the defense is ready, the court would like to have an explanation. Please show us the method by which the victim's body was carried to Hazakura Temple. Snowmobile? I don't have snowmobile evidence. I do have track photo. Track photo. On that snowy night, there is one way that a body could have been moved. The snowmobile. Ah. As we know, the snowmobile was used that night. It was explained as having been used to dispose of the murder weapon, but it could have also have been used to carry a body. Did no one check the snowmobile for blood? Ah! This! This is completely unacceptable now, Miles Edgeworth! You've dug yourself into your own grave! You're also acting like Phoenix Wright! What do you mean? The only one that could have used the snowmobile was a defendant! She's the one who moved the body! Doesn't that put the final nail in your coffin? Huh. You're too late, Francisco Von Kama. And in fact, the defense has proven something else entirely. We have shown that this case requires further investigation. What? Where was the victim, Elise Donum, really killed? Her body was moved, whatever for. And finally... Just what does this image mean? What do you even think? Don't even... Do you even need to think about that? Such a creature could never see the truth. Let her own describe it. This witness certainly sits on one of the lowest possible branches of humanity. However, he would never utter a lie that could hurt a girl to whom he is enamored. He drew this, so it is something that actually happened. The defense stands firm at this point. Uh, Edgy, thank you! That settles it then. I cannot give a verdict under these circumstances. Grr! Grr! Right. I seem to have fulfilled my part in this. It is just as I thought. Francisco Von Kama, you make a wonderful partner. Excuse me! There was one reason, and one reason alone, for me being here. To expose the darkness lurking in this case, and then pass it on to Wright. Really? That's what this is all about? You could have just told me that from the very beginning! Then I wouldn't have the I would have had frenzy. <sighs> Miles Edgeworth! I don't care what you would do, what you were here to do. This is my chance to finally grind you under my heel. A shame that your chance seems to have slipped you by. What a shame, frenzy! This is all your fault. Such a terrible witness. <laughs> ow! 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 ow. <laughs> I demand satisfaction. I cannot believe that the witness's testimony relates to actual events. However, there was, has to be some sort of answer that, to the, for the questions it raises. Has, have his words here today been the truth or the lies? Next time we gather in this courtroom, there are those of the matter that shall be addressed. I'm counting on thorough investigation by both the defense and the prosecution. And with this, the rest is up to you, right? Court is now adjourned. So is that it for Edgeworth? Okay. I don't know, I kinda would've liked. Like playing out the rest of that case as Edgeworth. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this episode. Thank you for watching. I guess next time we're gonna be Phoenix. So yeah, see you then.